evening [leh] (err) thanks for watching my finance lingo channel this is my first youtube video and I welcome your feedback I'm going to share with you what stock I'm analyzing recently and will present to you what are the information I had found do take note that this presentation is pre provided for you for general information and all only and does not constitute any recommendation or offer or solicitation solicit for to purchase any shares or whatsoever within okay I uh, do think that this is a private video. Uh, it's not can be not be found by any public on YouTube. All right. Uh, so I'm going to present to you what I found. So today, uh, what I found here was uh, what I'm analyzing on what stock I'm analyzing recently is on the uh, Alibaba. So okay. So what I have found here was uh, recently that uh, Alibaba was uh, acquired by a lot of funds. So what I have found here is you notice that this China Consumer Fund actually. Uh, start loading up the Alibaba funds since uh, they got IPO. Alright, so this is the fund uh, allocations. Uh, they are allocating 1.3% into their funds. So this funds, what we can see here is that mostly allocated the China stocks. So uh, I noticed that this fund is still doing pretty well. Alright, so apart from that, I'm going to share with you the next one. So what I have here was another fund. This is the same by Fidelity. Uh, this is equally the same thing. I'm going to enlarge this thing. They, this fund had loaded up a 0 0.9 uh, 8 billion dollars worth uh, into correction is 8 million dollars worth into the uh, this fund. So and it's made up. Uh, it comprises about point uh, close to one percent of this fund. So this is by fidelity. And apart from that, um, I'm going to sh show you this one Frank by Franklin Button. This is uh, one of the big finance player, which is uh, sometimes involved in managing our state funds. So what we can see here, this is a uh, Franklin Global Equity Strategies funds. So as of this date, December thirty first, two zero one five, uh, they have loaded up Alibaba as well, and the number of shares they add up here is about um, ten thousand eight hundred shares, which come out to quite a small value. It was uh, come to eight hundred and seventy seven thousand US dollars. So uh, what we can see here is that a lot of fun is loading up Alibaba. Another one we're looking at here, uh, I think it's still another one, is Franklin Technologies Funds. So well, uh, it looks like a lot of people is loading up then. Next, what we have here is uh, Fullerton Funds. All right, Fullerton Funds, I repeat. Well, it's one of the funds that recently uh, publicized on the newspapers that they are going managing same state fund as well. So what we have here is uh, similarly again, uh, this is bonds, they manage bonds. So they load up about, um, let me see, 1 million shares, which is a fair value of sing dollars as well, um, uh, 1.3 million sing dollars. Yeah, so uh, this bonds that's actually exp uh, maturing on 10.2024 giving 3.6% coupon rates to these uh, bond funds, right? So next, I'm going to share with you this uh, JP Morgan. Similarly, what we're seeing here, uh, this JP Morgan China funds, they've all loaded up Alibaba and amazingly, they load up quite a lot. Uh, these funds, actually, this, this uh, Alibaba actually made up of 3.77%. And uh, what we are looking at is uh, uh, they actually invested $46 million into this Alibaba. Okay, talking about Alibaba just before I moved on. Okay, among the, uh, this Alibaba is actually, uh, um, you know, they, they actually incorporated in Clayman Island. Usually I do not like stocks uh, that is incorporated in Clayman Island, but in this case, I actually give it an exception. Right? Because I don't think that uh, all the Fullertons and Franklin is going to make a mistake investing in Clayman Island. Cayman Island is uh, used to be no, well, very well known for tax haven. So yeah, over here I do want to highlight to you guys you know, what we are looking at. And apart from that, uh, the next company we are even looking at Tencent. This is a very large company and this is one of the funds that you should look, this is one of the stocks that you should look into. They even allocated about 9% of their holdings into this fund. So this is very amazing. So next, I share with you this one. Similarly, it's still on by J it's still by J P Morgan. And this 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 fund uh, has a lower allocation to the Alibaba, but nonetheless, it, it does does spark some interest on me. Okay, 
So uh, next one I'm going to share with you. Okay, this is what I have found. Uh, okay, I'm going to share with you. This is what I found on uh, on uh, by Philip. All right. So uh, do take this note deep. You can actually access this information on the Philip Worms 2.0. So what what we can look at here is that uh, I'm going is that since IPO on the in two zero one four the IPO price was sixty eight dollars and presently the today's price uh, Alibaba is at about ninety four or ninety five US dollars this range. So uh, what what we can see here is that the total revenue of Alibaba have actually increased from the two zero one two to two zero one six. Uh, personally, back then when I got IPO, it doesn't really arouse my interest. I was you know, trying to observe what's going on uh, Alibaba because uh, this is a company that registered in Cayman Island. It does uh, cause some concern on me. So, but what you can see here is that the share price has actually rallied back down to over $100 uh, sometime in 2015 and it came down uh, in, uh, in late to 2015 to the range of 6070 so, uh, but what we are looking at, I think we, are, we have hit the bottom over here, this region, and it's going to slowly uh, acc accelerate, so it's going to increase the share price, by the way. So, uh, now uh, we are looking at accounting book value of this company. Okay, uh, so what we can see here is the accounting book value of this company over the past five years have been increasing, with exception to 2012 and 2013. All right. So uh, otherwise, other than that, the uh, accounting book value really rock skyrockets. So it uh, was IPO around this uh, two zero one four. So you, you probably notice a large increase in the equity value here. So um, so the main concerns what, what I'm looking at I want to know what is the com this this company really growing in size. So um, what you probably notice here is that there was a huge increase in the accounting book value here. We've really explained what's going on and how much profit they are making. So uh, when I look at net income plus equities, well, it just gives me a really guideline that, well, true, this is the accounting book value. There's, there's little um, no, uh, book declaration on this uh, balance sheet. So I'm pretty fine with the way they do that. I mean, the accounting numbers I have. Okay, uh, this information, of course, supplied by Thomson Reuters. Uh, this is uh, can be found on points too. Okay, uh, do take note that one uh, very unusual thing about this fund, uh, I wouldn't say very unusual, uh, but it's just that this fund doesn't give out dividends, so you do not expect dividends from this fund. Uh, it's, uh, some people, some investors may be concerned why and uh, why not. So generally I'll say, okay, it, it makes sense not to give out dividends because uh, e, Alibaba need to really capture the future's uh, earnings, uh, let's say 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, 2020 of this e-commerce boom. If they are go going to keep giving up profits, they uh, and they will not be able to capitalize on all this uh, future's value of e-commerce. So it makes perfect sense uh, of them not giving out dividends to capitalize the market before the competitors such as uh, Q10 or even uh, uh, yeah, Amazon to cap, uh, start capturing all this market, understanding that um, B2B trades on Alibaba is really booming. So, okay, so this generally what I found, I'm going to present to you another thing, which is the, uh, what I've analyzed. So it's maybe a little number crunching, but do bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to share with you here. So hold on, all right, okay. So do bear me. Okay, the number is pretty big, so I'm gonna adjust it. Okay. Okay, this other information just now is captured by the um Thompson writers. Okay, then the numbers, the accounting numbers be beside this uh, orange column is all the numbers captured by the Thompson writers. So I'm just actually I actually just copy and paste over here. So what I derive was on the right column here. So Okay, what I notice here is that you can probably can see that the revenue grow from 2013 at 2013 and 2012. There was amazing 72% of revenue growth from Alibaba. And the numbers here is derived as well. Uh, and what we see here is that the growth here was still very amazing. But one thing we can see here is that the revenue growth, uh, we are looking at some decline. But nonetheless, it's still on the double digit, high double digits figures. So it's very good. Uh, it's very, it's still, the, 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 there's still a lot of opportunities in e-commerce B2B. 
uh, looking at that, we do notice that the uh, gross profit margin is pretty healthy. So let's, uh, after deducting all the business expenses, we are looking at the net profit margin here. All right, this is uh, this number is derived from all this uh, net income divided by the total revenue. So what we're looking at here is that the net profit margin is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, this is going to explain that they are having a very good um, of uh, operational efficiency here. So did we do not this from the, from the numbers we can see here that the operate, operating efficiencies had uh, clearly increased and this is very good. So with the revenue increase over the years well uh, and uh, profit uh, operating margin uh, operating efficiency increase, I think we could be looking at more profits on Alibaba, which probably explains why uh, so many people is actually investing in them and so many funds is investing in them. So uh, I'm going to go down forward, uh, down summer. So when I started this Excel sheet, the share, share price was back then uh, $98. Today is trading about $94.95. So um, looking at that, the PE ratio was around 23 or uh, around 22. Okay, so uh, I do a forecast, a forward-looking forecast to see what, what kind of numbers I'm looking at. All right, so uh, over here, Okay, um, assuming the, I uh, just gonna give some estimations that this is the uh, increase in revenue trend. So I do derive that this is the revenue numbers uh, for uh, in this for in this years 2017 to 2012. So, uh, okay. So, um, so now we look at, uh, actually work out the, the mean, the based on this uh, profit margins. Okay, the mean, median, and the average. So what we are looking at here, the mean is that uh, the minimum they are operating based on over here is that they are earning 21%, and the maximum of their net profit margin is 70%. So uh, the average is 33-38%, and the medium is at 44%. So uh, well, I'll actually work out the matrix here. So if we are taking out the mean, uh, minimum net, net income for this 2017 to 2012, this is the figures are derived. Okay, and the median, this is the figures to this figure that we derived, and the maximum, this is the figure that I derived based on the net profit uh, margin over the past five years. Okay, um, so now we from here, we actually derive the um, the earning per share based on the similarly the mean, the median, max, and average. I'm going to exclude the mean because because uh, this company, the net profit margin had been had been gradually increasing over the past five years, so I do not think that they are going to report this no, no low net profit margin over the next few years. So uh, looking at that, so uh, I did come out to so these figures from from there. I uh, derived the earning per share because since the share is fed, uh, earning per share, then I from here I derive the assuming the price to earning ratio remain constant as of recently so uh, what kind of uh, PE ratio are we looking at so um, presently um, so what we can see here assuming that the future PE is uh, about 19 so uh, presently I think they are trading about 22 or 23 times so assuming on the low sides we are looking at um, the share price in the future should be trading within this range which is pretty large so uh, this is 2021 and this is uh, 2017 so this is the lowest range that you can go so if assuming uh, the revenue growth remain constant we are looking at this this price share price yes this is a uh, 19 PE ratios so assuming at the max PE ratio that we are looking at going forward into 2020 all right so we are looking at a share price of 190 dollars well, I need to recap that present share price is only trading about ninety-six dollars a share. Uh, so it's it's pretty good upside, assuming that this is the range. Uh, so uh, even uh, taking at the max range, and they're good, just that they need they just need to maintain the net profit margins. Uh, we are looking at this kind of share price movements. So pretty good. So even even assuming on the average size, um, average uh, earnings net profit margins. Uh, well, what we can see here, well, there's the pro could probably go around within this range. So now I'm going to go on a good assumption that the P remain constant. So if the P remain constant, forward looking. So uh, we are going to look, we are looking at a very attractive numbers here. 
So three years down the road, the share price could be trading one to one and uh, even on a one based on the median. So going on the maximum, uh, based on the historical maximum net profit margin, you are looking at few, uh, they could be trading one to seven US dollar to two hundred eighty US dollars. Five years later, that's three fold or uh, two fold. Sorry. So uh, likewise, I'm going to assumption that uh, okay, this is based on the Nasdaq average PE ratios. So uh, this is very uh, good, uh, very attractive looking, but I do not think Alibaba will trade at this range. But nonetheless, I'm just going to work it out. So this is a little uh, far-fetched, but we never know. So uh, if you look at the most optimistic numbers, we are looking at this kind of share prices. What we can see is that, wow, that was really very optimistic. But nonetheless, I'm going to think that this uh, 23 PE ratios is going to be a reason number reasonable number so uh, what we can see that uh, is only among all these quadrant there's only three quadrants three, three boxes which are uh, they're trading below the present share price other than that few years down the road we could be looking at very attractive uh, share price for Alibaba so um, overall I think uh, the accuracy the, the, the odds of this company looks pretty good I, well, I can't be guaranteed that this is the share price you're trading but this is just uh, what I found so um yeah so uh, i'm gonna think that this alibaba in the year 2018 we are trading between this range and 2019 trading between this range so that's what i found on the excel sheet so next i'm going to show you okay uh on the nasdaq uh who who is the loading up this share so this uh, you can visit all these nasdaq websites so take a look at this this is uh, alibaba Okay, presently it's trading at $95.95. So what we are looking at here is that amazingly, this is our grandpa fund. Our grandpa funds is uh, putting our money, uh, 5 billion uh, sing dollars or 5 million US dollars into this Alibaba. So look at the confidence level. So I need to reiterate uh, the Masix is one of the fun house that I was looking at when I want to when I graduated only first class honors students I really get to be part of them so what we are looking at five billion dollars and apart from that a lot more funds is uh, uh, adding into them so what we are looking at here is that they just had at another 30% recently into the fund which means to say they are adding another one more billion dollars one billion dollars worth into these funds well, we can see that there's a lot of sell position, but when I check that all these people, uh, check all these people who sold all the shares, well, they actually have a very small holdings in it. It's just a very small fund, fund house. So let's let's take a look. Uh, so they, they just buy only seven thousand shares, uh, or there are five thousand shares, or even hundred thousand shares. By all the small private equity firms, it's so it's not really doesn't ring the alarm. It's only those which have uh, increase in holdings here, uh, which like the Masik or the really big fund house, which is loading them up. So this is really amazing. All right, so I guess, okay. So do take note, they they really load up in huge quantities. So apart from that, um. Okay, so this is a foreign shares. You can actually buy it through this point two point zero. So you can just buy it to shares uh, through this platform. So do take note. Uh, you can access the information that I've shown you earlier here at the Philips Store Analytics. So okay, you can take a look over here. So next, I'm going to share with you the graph what I found on the charting graph. All right, so this is the graph I actually captured a few days ago. There was trade when it was trading at ninety eight dollars or ninety seven. So this is what I found. So back in this uh September around September two zero one five, the share price was trading around uh, sixty dollars region. All right, so uh in the May two zero one six, they're trading at seven dollars seventy dollars US region. So I draw a support line over here, all right, because in the, uh, it's, it's, it's always hit this region and the share price start bouncing up. And I draw a resistance price lines over here and I notice that when it hit this region, it often the share price start coming down, people start taking profits. So what we're looking at here, I, I work out the gradient of this uh, line and we from this uh, $70 and minus $60. 
all right over here divided by this five month time frame all right this september to, to uh, may to march 2016 we notice that there is a, a, a gradient of a two us dollars per month and this support line so generally on the one year basis you are looking at 24 usd if you can manage to buy around this support line so assuming that the revenue of this Alibaba still maintain the growth, we could be looking at a very attractive valuation for Alibaba. So looking at that, so we, we can see that uh, this this medium line here is the average line. So another thing, uh, I'll probably looking at this this uh, medium line and the support line here, this region for uh, entry. So uh, I haven't made any purchase of this share yet, but definitely this is on my radar. Okay. So uh, you guys can uh, actually see the charts uh, at this point too as well. Just do a right click and do a chart live here. All right, the charts will appear and you can, can uh, draw the uh, charting analysis. So this is Alibaba. This is what we are looking at. So I'm just going to do a short term sample. Just click this over here to draw the line. And we can draw the support line over here. So you can see very clearly the, the share price bounce around these regions. Other than here, it was quite fortunate. Time and other than that, uh, the the share price started goes up. So I'm really looking forwards to these regions here. Uh, I'm gonna draw same thing here and draw a support resistance line and I'm gonna draw and a uh, line of best fit. All right, line of best fits here. So yes, when I'm looking at once it hit the ninety dollars region, I'm probably looking at an entry. So what another thing you can look at here, this this region here, you notice that there was a huge gap up. Uh, what I'm indicating here, yes, there was a huge jump here. So I do not think that the share price will jump below this region unless there's really very bad news. So I probably take ninety-one dollars or around a bit as a benchmark that uh, this is a share price that it could that most decline to. Uh, then that you start bouncing back right up. So I probably look for an entry around this region. I won't be very picky on the entry over here. So uh, that's why I have for you. So on this chart thing. So over on the short term, but nonetheless, I'm still thinking that over the short term, they are, uh, the share price do, to still come down because the MACD is starting on the trending down over here and the RSI is on the high side. Uh, looking at that, I probably, barely, you know, uh, who look at the when it's reaching a low RSI for an entry, hopefully it does come down, but uh, I won't be very uh, picky on that because this is, I think it's a good stock. So... Um, I probably when the RSI come about 50 regions, I uh, probably will start looking for entry. So this is charting. All right. So what I have here. So I think that's all I have for you guys. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, remember this: your money is your money. I don't decide for money. So, uh, do decide on whether you want to invest uh, on the on the stocks as well. But uh, let's say you uh, do think not. This is a foreign share. So when you invest on the point is 2.0. Your shares will be kept under the custodian of Philips. Well, do you think you know, that uh, there will be uh, there will be foreign shares custodian fees if there is uh, no trade on or no trades in your account? So you might probably con if you want to invest in this share, probably should consider about four thousand more four thousand dollar worth of or more. So on on these shares, so for US, you can actually buy one share or even ten shares. All right. So, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you are not comfortable with two point two dollars and fourteen cent custodian fees on these short foreign shares, uh, I think you should avoid this share. So, uh, but of course, you if you do trade frequently, I think this shouldn't be a concern. Um, this since Alibaba is uh, is not giving out dividends, I think this 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 portion is is out of the question. So, all right. So other than that, I I don't think there's any other fees that should come along for these shares. So um, do take note this is uh, when you invest in foreign shares, you just need to be careful of these foreign shares. So if you're going to invest about $500 or $1,000, thing, I think this share you should avoid, really avoid. So okay, so other than that, I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Uh, I, do, I do welcome your feedback, so guys, so uh, do, do let me know how, how these videos goes. Alright, uh, thanks for watching.